happens. So you may not know this video. Um, that's the laser pointer, now I've got it. But finally, you should see there are 440,000 views on a video. So let's talk about the content of the video. In this video, Amy from California complains about the policy of Bank of America. Bank of America sent her increasing the credit card interest rate from 12% to 30% without a note. And she sat in front of the video of the video camera and just said, Enough is enough. I don't pay. Come and get me. Smoke this in your bailout pipe. This is what she said. Five minutes, half a million views. So you talk about branding in the web, you should think about something like that. Because Bank of America now, you know, has the attention of a small television broadcasting station in Germany. 500,000 uh, 500, views is not too bad, actually. So you should think about it. What, what is really happening within social media and what is really happening with Web 2.0? And maybe you can describe it like that. A very famous picture showing us a very crucial situation at the revolution, taking the power by the people and, you know, storming the Bastille. Maybe storming the banking institutions. So people are taking the power. People are in the position saying, we are the bank. It's not you. Why should you be the bank? Because you messed up my financial situation. This can be described as Web 2.0 happening within financial services. Customers do not know each other. This is maybe the, the type you are representing. The customers do not know each other. Very much privacy. What for? And banks are selling products. Is this financial services, as we've learned it in the university, defining services? No, it's not. It's not integrating the customer. It's disintegrating the customer. Mainly, or let me say in some examples, banks are selling products customers do not need. Can you tell me the need of a 75-year-old customer getting a life insurance? It's happening. You know, sales goals are not customer goals. Partially. What we call community banking, and of course we, you know, selfish as we are, we take us as an example, um, is, let me say, being described by two things. First of all, the customers know each other, which is new. They can know each other, I have to say, on an anonymous basis. They can exchange on this basis about the senseless or the senseful products and advisors. And they can decide whether they want to have a whether they want to cover their financial needs with other users or with the bank how this looks like i show you in a minute so this is community banking talking exchanging knowing sharing transacting never forget about transaction i doubt the sense of social media platforms excluding transactions Web 2.0, as I mentioned in the beginning, is not part of your marketing strategy. It's part of your fundamental corporate strategy. It's not part of your communication. It's part of your strategy for the whole company. Peer-to-peer -peer banking must be possible. As we've heard, learned before, why is it not possible at a classical bank to do peer-to-peer -peer lending? Why not? Microbanking must be possible. Forget about your back office. How to get rid of your back office? This is Web 2.0. This Web 2.0 demands to get rid of your back office. Free of back office cost, as I mentioned. Global scalability, by that. Open source and sustainability of a regulated bank. Yes, of course, this is very important because it's a USP within this very modern and innovative internet world to be sustainable and regulated by banking authorities and it's not the question, do we need banks, yes or no, which is, you know, this question is coming out of the internet industry. It's the question, what kind of banks do we need? We need regulation, yes, but what does a bank do within this regulative container? Under this license roof, what does a bank do? So first of all, yes, we are a bank. Banking with friends, that's our claim. So not because we as a bank are the friends, because we enable you to bank with your friends. That's the differentiator. 
Our customers know each other. Our customers are invited to talk and communicate and to exchange. So they have many platforms and applications to exchange, to compare their cost analysis and whatever. They can place questions. They can rate and recommend products. They can rate, recommend advisors of other companies. We have no sales advisor, nothing. Second, of course we are active within social media platforms as we, as we have learned that it is necessary to be there because we cannot expect people to come to our place. We have to come to where the people are. You've heard this before. So this is why we are at Xing, of course. This is why we are at Facebook, of course. This is why we are at Twitter. How do I regard the content of those platforms? It's not my job. I just have a look how many people there are there. And this is why I am there. It's not me to judge it, you know? Second, our customers receive money and bonuses for this kind of exchange. Whenever you place an advisor in our platform to be judged and rated by other users, you get money for that. Whenever you place a product to be judged and rated by other users, you get money for that. Whenever you answer the question of another user, you get money for that. Why can I afford? Because I do not have to pay somebody sitting in my office placing content on our website. Maybe this content is totally wrong and not you know, covering the needs of our customers. So it's much better to integrate the customers in creating this content and paying that. Third, our customers can decide whether they want to, uh, whether they want to cover their financial needs with a bank, classical photograph, or with other users. Means, this is the central platform they are acting on. They can decide whether to lend money from other users or whether they can lend other users money or whether they want to put their money into a classical banking account and receiving a decent interest rate on that. It's on iSight, peer-to-peer and a classical B2C banking product. It's on the same level. That's community banking, because we transact within the community. So this is how it looks like. What is especially new to us, or what I think is especially new, is that uh, if you lend somebody money, you want to learn more about this person, of course. And we have to really think about what the process looks like, about this credit um, reliability of a user. And we will integrate the social media activities entered by the user in a social media profile within the banking profile. So this means that we come towards a situation comparable to a small village, let me say, 10 years ago. Why? Because whenever you are in a village, living in a village where everybody knows each other and you really screw up something, everybody knows. And this is very important. Why is it? Because you think about it before you screw up. And you take care of what you do. And you take care of your reputation. So this transparency is very important. This feedback is very important. To get the potential of getting sanctionized is very important in order to behave properly. So this is why we integrate that. Of course, it's up to the user to show it openly, yes or no. But whenever a user is not disclosing that, be careful. How scalable is it? Well, what you've seen very briefly and shortly is, let me say, on the uh, technology of an e-wallet. So we are the first bank offering an e-wallet. What is a wallet, an e-wallet? Well, if you have a look to PayPal and money bookers, you know what an e-wallet is. You can send money to an email address. You can do so with our e-account. You can send money to a mobile number. You can do so with Fido Community Banking. You can lend money on, an e, uh, on, an, on another email address or another mobile number. You can do so with Community Banking. I can lend you, I can do a peer-to-peer -peer credit process on your phone number. That's Community Banking. 